Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. My name is Kevin. Well, I have really been enjoying uh, learning more about and, and raising uh, these Caternix quail over the past year. Last summer, I started with just uh, eight quail, and today I've got my barn full of all of the breeders that I need. I currently have about 18 uh, females and three males that I'm keeping as breeders. Uh, they have been laying eggs all winter long, which is great. Uh, I have a light for them out in the barn that stays on for 14 hours a day. It's on a timer, and that has been keeping them laying even through the coldest, dreariest parts of the winter. Today, I put about 65 eggs into the incubator. Uh, those are eggs that I've saved over the past week, and today I wanted to uh, kind of help you guys out a little bit by telling, by showing you how I save and collect my eggs, and also go over some basic uh, instructions on how to incubate eggs. Now keeping and storing your eggs doesn't have to be a difficult process. It's uh, actually really simple. There's no uh, real magic formula of how to do it. So I wanted to go over with you guys first how I store my eggs. Now when you collect your eggs, you need to make sure that you're collecting them at least once a day. Uh, if it's going to be really, really cold outside and you're collecting through the winter and they might freeze, uh, you might want to collect them even more often because if they freeze, obviously they're not going to be any good. Now there are a few types of eggs also that you don't want to keep to try to incubate just based on how they look. You can pretty much guess that they're not going to be fertile. So let me show you a few examples of eggs that I've collected over the past week that I've decided not to keep for incubating. The first example is this right here. And the only reason I didn't keep this one is because it has a lot of quail poop on it. If they are heavily soiled, uh, you don't want to keep them. Uh, you don't want to get all of your other eggs that you are going to be keeping uh, dirty. So just, uh, you know, it's better to sacrifice one or two that may have gotten really soiled uh, and just, you know, wash it and use it for eating. Uh, the next one is this one right here. And the reason I didn't keep this one is because it's cracked. Uh, if there's any kind of cracks at all, obviously it's not going to be good for incubating. So you need to toss those out. Uh, the next two... Uh, are these right here. Now I'm not really sure whether or not these would be fertile, uh, but they don't look normal. Uh, so my suggestion is any time that an egg just doesn't look the way it's supposed to, uh, it's better off just to not use it for incubating. And then the last two are these two right here. And these are about, I'd say 50% bigger than they should be, which to me tells me they're double yokers. Uh, which again means they're not going to be fertile and good for hatching. So uh, the fact that these are really big compared to our normal quail egg tells me we don't want to be putting those in the incubator. So those would be some examples of eggs that I just would not keep. Uh, it's not worth your time. You're better off to save the ones that you think have the best chance of, of actually being able to hatch when you get to incubating. So as you're collecting your eggs every day, you're going to need a place to store them uh, during the week while you're waiting to incubate them. Now you can store your quail eggs in just a regular chicken egg carton, uh, but you see that they, they don't really stand up. It's best to be able to stand them uh, or to put them pointy end down while you're saving them. Uh, so you'll need to find something that will work to help you hold them that way. If all you have is an egg carton, that's fine. Just do the best you can to keep them standing up. Uh, what I've actually done is I've taken one of our uh, trays that we start seeds in. I flipped it over and I cut the ends off. And I actually just store them all in one of these trays. I just happen to have a cooler that this tray fit in perfectly. Uh, and I can store about 60 eggs this way. So this worked out perfect for me. Uh, but again, just like uh, everything else, there's no one way to do it. You just basically need to have a place that they can stand on pointy end down. Now while you're storing them for the week, you do want to be able to keep them cool, uh, which is why I do them in a cooler. If you have a room in your house that stays cool, you can just put them there and there's no need to use a cooler. Uh, but ideally you want them somewhere in the 50 to 60 degree range. Uh, you don't want them to get really much colder than that and you don't want them to stay much warmer than that. 
uh, you want to keep them right in that 50 to 60 degree range and that will give you your best fertility when you get to the end of the week and put them in the incubator. Now one tip that I learned from another YouTube channel, uh, Chris over at Slightly Redneck, uh, is uh, to use some Listerine spray to help kill any of the bacteria that may be on the outside of the egg. So I have just this little spray bottle that I bought um, and I have this filled, uh, you have to use the original Listerine, the yellow colored, um, and you put uh, half Listerine and half water. And then every day when you collect your eggs before you store them, you just spray them lightly like that and then you can store them. And that will kill any bacteria that may be on the outside of the shell, but it won't affect the fertility of the egg. And since I've been doing that, I have noticed an improvement in my hatch rates. It's important that during the week while you're storing your eggs, you rotate them twice a day. So if this were down inside of the cooler, what I would do is in the morning, I would have the cooler propped up so the eggs were like this. And then at night when I put new eggs in, uh, for the day, when, after I collected my eggs, I would just put something other, under the other end of the cooler so that it tilts like this. And basically, if you do that twice a day during the week, uh, your fertility will stay pretty good on your eggs. Uh, the theory behind that is, is that there's an air sac inside of the egg, and you want that to be able to rotate so that uh, the inside of the egg doesn't just stick to the shell in one spot by staying there too long. So if you rotate them twice a day, that will be perfect. Now as far as incubators go, I just use standard styrofoam incubators. You can use uh, really any kind of incubator. They make some nice plastic ones now. You can get fancier with the cabinet style incubators that hold, you know, a thousand eggs at a time. Uh, but for me, the styrofoam ones work just fine. I've had them for a long time. I recently did a video about replacing the thermostats to a digital thermostat. And since I've been doing that, it's been uh, much better for me. Uh, the old dial thermostats that came with them, I just never had good luck with. I know some of you say that you have perfect luck with them. Um, I just could never get those things to stay at the right temperature, but the digital thermostat where you just program in the temperature uh, has worked perfectly. Now inside of the incubator, I do highly encourage that you have a egg turner um, it just makes life much easier. But if you don't have an egg turner in your incubator, then you will need to turn your eggs several times a day. Uh, you'll just have to go in there and basically move them around so that they all move to a new spot several times a day. But again, I highly suggest that you use an, uh, an egg turner inside of your incubator. Now I actually have two incubators that I use. And the reason that I do that one is so that as soon as I move one batch out to start hatching, I can start incubating more in my first incubator. But it also seems to help because it will keep your main incubator, the one that has your egg turner in it, cleaner. And I've just found that having a cleaner incubator to start the eggs in uh, really helps improve hatch rates with quail eggs and chicken eggs. So if you can find, a, if you can afford or find a second incubator, uh, I have one that I have my egg turner in, and then when it's time for them to lay still, I move them to the second incubator, and that's where all of the hatching occurs. Now quail eggs hatch in about 18 days. Uh, so on day 15, you want to take them out of the egg turner and put them into either, take the egg turner out and lay them on the floor of your incubator, to hatch, or like I do, I move them to my second incubator to hatch there. In general, uh, they will begin hatching on day 18. In my experience, it's like day 19, 19 and a half, uh, that they really start hatching a lot. What I've read is that everybody will experience a little bit different. It just depends on exactly what the temperature was in your, in your incubator, humidity, everything plays a role. But for me personally, I find that day 19 seems to be the most active day uh, for hatching. Uh, but you'll always have a couple on day 18 and you'll always have some that don't come till day 20 or even 21. Uh, so, uh, you know, but the bulk of them will hatch on day 19. I found that on average, I will get about a 70% hatch rate. Uh, and I'm real happy with that. I'm sure I could make all kinds of adjustments and try all kinds of new things to get that even better. Uh, but for me, this system works well. And if I can get 70% of them to hatch, I'm perfectly fine with that. Now the ideal temperature for your incubator is going to be around 99.5 degrees. 
that's what I set mine at. It stays uh, really in the range of about 99 to about 100 degrees. And you'll see it fluctuate back and forth within that range. If you can keep it in that range, uh, you'll be just fine. Even if it goes a little bit lower for a little while or a little bit higher for a little while, uh, it's not going to be a big deal. You just don't want prolonged temperatures at either extreme while you're incubating your eggs. Uh, you also want to try to keep your humidity in the incubator about 50%. Uh, at least for the first 15 days. I found that about 50% works really well. Uh, after 15 days, when you move them off of the egg turner to just lay flat, uh, then you want to increase your humidity to about 65 or 70% if you can, uh, and that will give you uh, the best results as far as your hatching goes, and it makes it easier for the chicks to be able to hatch. Now, after your quail hatch, uh, you want to leave them in the incubator uh, for probably about two days. I try not to open the incubator at all for two days after the first ones hatch. Uh, they can survive for that amount of time with just the uh, nutrition that they had from the egg and you really don't want to open the incubator if you don't have to because once uh, the egg is pipped, so if you have some chicks running around and you have some eggs that are still uh, not hatched but maybe they have pipped a little bit, uh, when you open that incubator and some cooler air rushes in, it can actually almost shrink wrap the babies inside of those eggs. Uh, that cooler air will kind of make that membrane on the egg kind of suck in on itself, and you'll actually stop some of them from hatching that normally would have hatched. Uh, so uh, fight the urge to go in there. Uh, they'll be just fine for up to two days after they hatch. After two days, I'd try to go in and as quickly as you can take out the, the first ones that came out or any that are perfectly dry, uh, but don't remove any from the incubator until they're dry. Then I put the cover back on and again, I allow the incubator to keep running till about day 22 just to make sure there's no late ones that are going to hatch later on. So I hope this has helped you guys a little bit. Uh, hatching eggs doesn't need to be a difficult thing to do. Uh, it's really quite simple. Now, the eggs that I've been talking about today have been for Caternix quail. If you're doing a different type of quail, there may be different information out there for you. Uh, so again, this is specific to Caternix, which is really the main type of quail that most people are raising on their homesteads for meat and eggs. So I hope that this has helped clarify and make simple some of the uh, procedures that it takes to hatch quail eggs. It's really pretty simple. Uh, I was a little bit scared when I first started doing it because I had heard that the, the chicks were going to be so delicate and uh, it was so hard to do. And uh, I found that none of that is really true. If you just kind of use common sense, uh, everything will work out just fine. So hey, if you have enjoyed this video, if you're enjoying our channel, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. If you know someone who would enjoy this, uh, please share this on your social media. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.